it's uh, it's just the frustration I have of you know doing these sorts of things for almost forty years now, and not being awake. And you know, a lot of the time it's okay, but some of the times, like the last couple of days, it's not okay. You're not awake. You know what I mean. <laughs> the shift you talked about this morning. The, oh, this is the way it is. I would settle for that. It doesn't have to be the dramatic. I mean, <laughs> I've read a lot of books about the dramatic. That's really what I want. But you know, I'll settle for the. I'll settle for the. <gasps> now I have those in small increments. I'm not saying I don't have any. I, I'm just. I'm just explaining to you what's happening with me. I just feel the need to say it. Okay that I just want to hit my head on the wall and just say, wake up, wake up. I'm just so sick of this, this illusory separate one. And as you just said, serving her, I mean, I'm exhausted. You know, I'm getting old, I'm getting tired. And I, this has been my main focus for 40 years. And, uh, and you did say once to me, um, the desire for liberation is important. But I know that hitting my head against the wall is not very productive, so <laughs> find a place in there somewhere. <laughs> You're still expecting something to happen. Unfortunately, yes. That's the problem. You still conceive of enlightenment as a marvelous event. Okay, you're, 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 you've agreed to settle for a not so marvelous event. Right. But nevertheless, <laughs> you still want quite a nice event. Something. Uh, just something. Yeah, just something. Just some, you still want something. That's it. That, that's the problem. I know. Enlightenment is not an event. It's not a marvelous event. It's not a mundane event. It's not any kind of an event. It's not something that happens. A shift. I've heard it explained as a shift, and I think e you use that word even today. Even that I'm not is sure. to say to say too much. But that's an event, yeah. Okay. No, it's not even an event. It's not. It's not. E that, that's just. It's a concession to the inadequacies of language to call it a shift or an event. L let's say you're watching TV, and you're you're watching a a, a movie. And you're looking at our favorite view, the landscape. And someone comes in and says to you, look at the screen. What do you do? Well, if there's something on the screen, I can't really see the screen unless there's no image there, or I can see through it, or... No. When you're looking at a, a, a TV, mm. the TV's off, yes? You just look at the blank TV, you're seeing the screen, yeah? You turn the, f the movie on, the screen doesn't disappear. You're still looking at the screen, but the screen now appears as a landscape. You get involved in the, in the, in the movie, it's a wonderful film, you get totally involved in it, you forget that you're seeing a screen, and you think that you're seeing a landscape. So your friend comes in and they s says, your friend says to you, what are you looking at? And what are you seeing? And you say, I've seen this marvelous landscape. And your friend says to you, look at the screen. Are you not already seeing the screen? Are you not already looking at it? In the form of the landscape. Yes, it, th th but, but it's, it's, it, it's the same screen. It's exactly the same screen that was there before you turned the movie on. It appears now, it's taken the shape of a landscape, but it's still the same screen. The screen hasn't disappeared. Yeah? So w would you say that it was a, a new, ev to see the screen was a new event? Is it a, a marvelous experience in, in the movie? Not in that metaphor, no. no. Do, does the screen even show up in the movie? No. no. What you're looking for is an event in the movie. You're still subtly imagining that enlightenment is, is a, a wonderful or even a not-so-wonderful event in the movie. 
And as long as you're looking for it in the movie, you're going to seem not to be seeing the screen because your attention is focused on objects. So what do you have to do to when you're looking at the landscape, what do you have to do to see the screen? In that metaphor, nothing. Yes, that th the screen is not an something new that comes in. Enlightenment is not something that is new. It's, it's not something that was lost and now has to be found. At, at best, and even this is not quite true, but at best we could say it was overlooked due to our fascination with the drama in the movie, that is the drama of the body, mind and world, due to our fascination, our exclusive fa fascination with these appearances, we seem to have lost sight of their reality, the screen. <coughs> and as a result of that, we think, oh, I must go looking for it. And off we go around the world, visiting uh, teachers and ashrams and, 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 and everything. We go on this terrific journey around the world, which is like the character in the movie searching for the screen. So now you are searching, going. Uh, the equivalent in your life is you, you are looking, traveling, you're the character in the movie, traveling around the world looking for the screen. In other words, you are looking in the mind and the body in your case, not in the world, but in the mind and the body for some special experience, which is, ah, that's it, that's the shift, that's the event, now I'm on the other side of the fence. There isn't a fence that you finally cross to get to enlightenment. Enlightenment is just, is, is, it's, like, it's like the moment you recognize the screen in the movie. And the moment you recognize it, simultaneous with that recognition, you recognize, oh, I was always seeing the screen. I never really ceased seeing the screen only because of my fascination with the drama in the movie that it seemed to be absence, the screen. And as a result of that apparent absence, I went off out into the world searching for it. It's, it, it's a, I was always the screen, right? I mean, that's the next step. Yes, y you have never, for a, a, a fraction of a second, ceased being the presence of awareness, the unlimited, ever-present awareness. You have never ceased to be that. I feel that more and more, but the, this illusory separate self, sometimes she's, she's kind of melting away and becoming more vague, you know? And I go, oh, wow, great, she's starting to disappear. <laughs> but why do you want her to disappear? What, what because you're saying, she's miserable no, sometimes. Okay, what, what, what you're saying, so the equivalent in, in our metaphor of what you're saying is, I, you're, you're watching this period drama, there are lots of characters, and there's one woman <laughs> in the movie. I don't want her in that you movie. You don't like her. And what you're saying is, until that woman gets out of the movie, I can't see the screen. <laughs> only when she leaves the movie, only then will I notice the screen. That's what you're saying. Well, as you said earlier, it, all the energy that is that is spent on her, that to no avail. But whose no problem is she? It, that does the, it, for, 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 for the screen, it, it, is, the, is this troublesome woman in the movie a problem? She might be a problem for one of the other characters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Part of her own self. <laughs> but she's not a problem for the screen. In fact, uh, uh, awareness doesn't have problems, doesn't know problems. Why? Because in order for there to be a problem, there needs to be resistance. There needs to be the, I don't like this. That's what makes a situation a problem. Yeah? But awareness is like empty space. It's never saying to the current experience, I don't like you. And therefore, it doesn't have problems. So I it's not uh, saying, oh, my horrible separate self needs to be got rid of. I'm fed up with her. The I that is fed up with her is another form of herself. In other words, the separate self is perpetuating itself by trying to get rid of itself. Right, I know, yeah. And so you're caught in, 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 a, in this mind fr from which you are understandably tired. 
of trying to get rid of yourself. I, the separate self, want to get rid of myself so that I, the separate self, can experience enlightenment. And you're going round and round and round, and you're rightly frustrated and, and disheartened because you're engaged in a never-ending endeavor, which is perpetuating the separate self by trying to get rid of it. I, it's j Just see the situation clearly. You cannot get rid of an illusion. You know, I see all that, but it's. I mean, well, I no, see but it if you, if you really no, no, but to to really see it, right, it would bring that endeavor to an end, right. because uh, w what do you have to do to get rid of the the landscape that you're watching? It, you can't do anything because the landscape's not really there. What can you do to an illusion? What do you need to do to an illusion? just to see that it's an illusion. Don't spend your life trying to get rid of an illusion. It's a waste of a lifetime. Well, what I mean by trying to get rid of it is seeing it as an illusion. That's what I mean. Yeah, you know, what you just said, but I also see that, yeah. I'm okay, so, so now, to, to, to see that what you are is not a separate limited self, I, I, is it not clear to you now that you are the one that is aware of your experience? Okay, now, if you were to turn your attention towards that one, where do you go? Nowhere. No. I, if you were, can you even turn towards it? Which direction? No. So, so how can it be separate or limited if you can't find it as any kind of an object? You answered both those questions from your experience. That was obviously true. So... If you cannot find the awareness that you know yourself to be, if you don't know where to look for it, or how do you know that it has a limit or that it is separate? Only an object could be limited or separate. Exactly. You don't know that. Right there, right there in that understanding, and I can see you're answering these questions from understanding, not because you've read books, and, and right there is the knowledge that what you are it, it has no limits. Just live what you understand. S take your stand there. That one, that awareness, is, is always wide awake. I, the enlightenment is not for awareness. Awareness is already the light that illumines all experience, that makes all experience knowable. It, it cannot be enlightened. What would enlighten it? It is already the light that makes experience knowable. One definition of awakening I've heard is awareness recognizes itself. Are you aware right now? <coughs> yes? Okay. How do you know you're aware? H why did you answer? How come you answered yes to that question? It's self-evident. It's self-evident. And what is it? To whom is it self-evident that awareness, that you are aware. To itself. Right there is the experience of awareness, being aware of itself. That's it. It never gets better than that. <laughs> I mean, y you, you were the one that, and quite rightly, defined aw enlightenment as awareness, being aware of itself. And then I asked you the question, are you aware? And from your own intimate experience, you answered yes. In other words, I, awareness, am aware that I am aware. Nothing else can be aware that I'm aware. I, in, in other words, enlightenment is a, is a, is a fancy name for the, the most simple, the most ordinary, the most well-known experience there is. And all seven billion of us know it. However, because it cannot be found by the mind, in most cases it is deemed missing and as a result of that the peace and the happiness that are inherent in it are also considered missing and hence the imaginary self goes off into the world in search for the missing peace and happiness and as as we all know it doesn't live there where does it live in the simple knowing of our own being it's knowing of itself that is awarenesses awareness of awareness.
and it is the your your innermost experience at all times it's just it's not a new experience it's not something that has been lost and has to be found at 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 worst we could say it has been overlooked apparently the screen has been overlooked due to our exclusive fascination with the body the mind and the world all that's necessary is just it's just relax the focus of your attention from the body mind and world D don't you don't have to get rid of them just just ce cease being exclusively focused on and it just it's like just withdrawing your attention it's like putting the camera slightly out of focus and, and your attention f flows back to its source which is your yourself you just stand as this space of awareness and you just let the body the mind and the world do whatever they've been conditioned to do just let them flow by so I was going to ask you what you meant more by stand. To stand as a as awareness. But you just give another the, the way of experiencing the, the which, suggestion which I to get. To, uh, I'll just say something about that. Uh, the suggestion to stand as awareness would seem to be given to someone who is not presently standing as awareness and who might do so in the future. So to say that is a concession to the belief that we are a separate self. It doesn't really make sense, but it's sometimes used I in the context of a conversation. What would be more accurate would be to say, be knowingly the presence of awareness. The reason I say knowingly is just to say, be the presence of awareness. You already are that. You've never been anything other than eternal, infinite awareness. So hence be knowingly that. Know that you are that. That's what I mean by take your stand as that. Yeah, I can feel that. I know. I know what you mean because I. I yeah. Uh, um, you can't actually be anything other than that. Uh, another way. Uh, w another way of saying it would be just notice that you are that. Instead of mistaking yourself for a cluster of thoughts and feelings, just notice. Oh no. I'm the one that is aware of those. I'm not a cluster of thoughts and feelings. All these flow by, but I'm not flowing by. I'm just always here. I, I would recommend <coughs> really forgetting about enlightenment. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> no, no, but what I mean about I forgetting about enlightenment because of this tendency you have to conceive of it as an event. I, yeah, I know what you mean. Should I stop reading all those dangerous books about? <laughs> uh, you, 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 you don't have to read any more books. All, all your, uh, another question to ask yourself is just to look for that which is ever present in your experience. And just stay with that. And just look in all experience for, for that which is always there. It's looking for the screen in the movie. You don't have to look for it. It's actually, it, 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 it's staring itself in the face. What is always present in experience? Just the knowing of it. This knowing runs through all experience. That's it. Just be with that. Just allow that to come from the background into the foreground. Yeah, I experience that more and more, so I know what you mean. Yeah, it just 